Saw uh, a bit of a stoush also, James, on the weekend between David Littleproud in the Nationals and uh, this Chris Afooli character, uh, who's <laughs> character. Uh, well, seriously, <laughs> a, a liberal who backs a treaty mm. in Queensland. A oh, treaty, yes. in other words, the idea is that apparently Queensland. Did you know that you were at war with your own Indigenous Australians <laughs> and that Indigenous Australians were at war with you, Queenslanders? Were you aware of that? Because according to Palaszczuk and according to Chris Afooli, you are at a war with Indigenous Australians that requires a treaty to resolve it because that's what treaties do. They settle matters between different opposing uh, tribes. This is... What do you make of this? I mean, Chris afooli has got a great chance to unseat the... Uh, Palaszczuk government and he's determined to stuff it up. I can't believe that he would support treaty. David Christopher comes from Townsville where he did a great job as the deputy mayor there. He understands Indigenous affairs. For him to uh, say no to the voice but support a treaty is a complete contradiction because voice he's is coherent. first step in treaty. <laughs> so his exactly. position doesn't even make not sense. Desperately That's intellectually like, logical. That would be like saying, I'm not going to go on a date with you, but I will marry you. <laughs> That's basically exactly. Chris Afooli's position. No to the date, but yes, let's spend the rest of our lives together. Are you out of your mind? What is wrong with these state Liberal leaders, they are at, uh, yep. incoherent. Yep. incoherent. The other thing he said is he said, we, we will support treaty, but we won't support a monetary payment. Well, that's kind of the whole point of treaty, so it's incredibly yeah. well, naive precisely. And if we quote, to believe if you we can quote do that. If we David Littleproud, he said, and this is where I said the war thing, we've been at war with... Uh, we've never, we've never, said Littleproud, been at war with Indigenous Australians. We've never been at war in this country. We've worked hand-in-hand hand with genuine intent about making sure the opportunity, no matter your race, no matter your religion, is provided in this great country. Great words from David Littleproud. Uh, and James and Rita are 100% correct. You cannot have a treaty without reparations, without paying the rent, without sovereignty negotiations, all these sorts of things. And these are the... This is what The Voice is designed to do, Rita. And, and we know that. And we saw that reporting a couple of months ago that these treaties and dozens of them could be struck in Queensland. It's not just one. Yeah, it's a bit different. Right. Um, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars they can cost. That's what's been estimated. So to think this is a cost-free exercise, you just sign a piece of paper and everyone feels good about themselves and hugs it out, is so naive. And if this guy is that naive, he's not fit to be leader. This is not an issue you can be soft on if you want to be. Yeah. A, a Liberal leader and be elected and have support from the base. It is just a non-negotiable. Absolutely. Now, I quickly want to play you Linda Burney during the week, basically uh, oh, accusing thanks. people like ourselves here on this show uh, of uh, Trump politics. Well, that's actually a compliment. Thank you, Linda. Thanks, Linda. Uh, um, yeah, absolutely. Trump <laughs> politics, you bet. I wish we had more of it. Um, uh, have a listen to her. The no campaign is being run by a group called Fair Australia. It is importing Trump-style politics to Australia. It is post-truth. And its aim is to polarise. Now, we, we're also going to show another clip in a second, but there was Linda Burney. I also want to play your Marsha Langton very quickly. But uh, before yes? we do, yeah. just, just because Linda Burney has been big on this post-truth, <laughs> um, disinformation, misinformation, dangerous. This is a woman who has more than once repeated the deeply damaging flora and fauna lie, yes. which is just a myth. Even the ABC did a fact-check saying this is a myth. Indigenous Australians were never under a flora and fauna act, whether federal or state government. But it is an untruth that Linda Burney has repeated time and time again, and when she should have known better after several fact checks have come out, including that one from the ABC I mentioned, and yet she has the chutzpah to accuse others of engaging in damaging disinformation. And you know what? She's not alone because um, one of our colleagues <laughs> has also suggested something similar. Have a look. The idea is a good one. The outcome is a worthwhile one for the country. So we'll see whether whether the Yes campaign can put a decent uh, decent campaign together and not back some of the scare campaign and misinformation that's directed at the board. It's at this desk. It's at Sky News where a lot of the scare this. campaigns are being run. Oh, a lot of them are
Whoa. at this desk. This a lot desk. of the disinformation Let's go to campaigns wide shot. have been Can run. we show the desk? At this this desk. is the desk Mr. Kenny was referring to, presumably. This is the desk. So he's saying misinformation comes from this. Maybe they could give Chris Jenny, Kenny a job uh, at this new misinformation, disinformation bureau. Uh, to... He could be the czar. Exactly. He can look after that. I mean, seriously, <laughs> uh, what we deal with here in this show is dealing with opinion and de based on the facts of the matter and the reality. Is have a listen. After half a trillion dollars or so that we spend uh, on Indigenous affairs, which uh, non Indigenous Australia pays through taxes, through hard work, through the sweat and toil of every day, going out and doing a job. Over uh, 30 billion uh, a year. Over 30 billion dollars a year goes towards which we generously and willingly provide, goes towards improving the lot of Indigenous Australians. And yet, this is what Marshall Langton thinks we care about Indigenous Australians. Have a listen. People looking at these statistics uh, might ask, uh, well, if we keep going like this, every Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander person in the country will be locked up or dead uh, before long. Oh, That's there's just no hyperbole a disgrace. There. That is a disgrace. No disinformation there. No. But, you know, this is something that we spoke about last week and that fantastic piece by uh, Geoffrey Blaney yep. about the Uluru Statement from the Heart, which is so often presented as such a wonderful uniting document when it's actually very much a militant document. Yes. It's got all sorts of... There's nothing, there's nothing touchy-feely yeah. about the document. No, exactly. no. And, and, and do you know what? <laughs> I would encourage Australians to actually read the whole thing because you keep having it presented as something that it is not and also look at what's to come after The Voice because if The Voice is successful, if the referendum does get up, it's not going to stop there. Exactly. The next step is treaty and payments where every Australian pays. That's the bottom line. And property is at risk, as we've seen. That is the bottom line.